Good morning. We're on lesson 50. And yes, you have test 12 tomorrow. But look on the bright side. You don't have any homework over the weekend. Today we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations by completing the square. I know you've read your lesson and it it's, looks like kind of gobbledygook or something of that nature, but it's really easier to watch it done than it is to read about it being done. Completing the square is nothing more than a process or an algorithm that you follow that enables you to factor a quadratic. And having said that, I can see what's going on in your mind already. But Mr. Reed, I'm, I'm going to use the old quadratic formula. Well, you could do that. But later on in advanced mathematics, or much later in this book, if you're asked to uh, describe a circle by giving us its radius and telling us where the center of that circle is, you're going to have a little trouble using the quadratic because it's a different formula. And so use it. If they tell you to solve this or factor this quadratic by using the completing the square procedure, go ahead and do it. You'll get better at it. And besides, it's simple. I'm going to show you how simple it is. Remember, a quadratic is x squared. If it's x, that's a linear equation. If it's x cubed, or x to the fourth, or x to the fifth, that's not. It has to have a power of 2 to be called a quadratic. And today, we're going to use a procedure called completing the square, which uses this format. Now, books will call it x plus a. I will use x plus or minus a. And the reason I do that is because if you have x plus a negative a squared, you're really going to have x minus a squared. OK? So the book doesn't always explain it to you, or some books don't. And so if you see a negative a, you think you have the wrong format. It could be either plus or minus a. I'm going to leave that up there so you could watch the format we're going to use. Let's try a couple. Here's problem one. x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals 0. OK? We're going to go into that format. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is check to see if this right here is unity, meaning there's no number in front of the x squared. Now, there's a 1 there. Remember, we talked about that way back in Algebra 1. But unity means there's nothing higher than a 1 there. So we're ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to isolate the constant. x squared plus 2x plus something equals, and I'm going to move this over here and make it a positive 5. Now all I'm going to do is take the middle term. I'm either going to divide by 2 or multiply by half. And then I'm going to square it and add it to both sides. There's my 1. There's my 1. Now this right here, in case it's not a 1, is what the a is, what I had before I squared it. All right, now let's just review what we're doing. This is going to be the sign I'm going to use, the plus a. I'm going to take the square root of this and the square root of this. Now I know you have to factor that. That's why we completed the square. What this really is is x plus 1 times x plus 1. But that's not the right format. The format we want is very simple. All you have to do in your little procedure is take the square root of the first term and the square root of the second term and use that sign always. So this is going to be x plus 1 squared is equal to 6. And that's the right format. And then all you do is take the square root of both sides. And x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. And x then is equal to a negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. Now you really have two answers. You have x of 1 and x of 2. x of 1 would be a negative 1 plus the square root of 6. And x of 2 would be a negative 1 minus the square root of 6. And I didn't take my calculator out, but if you had to graph that, that would have a numerical value. OK? Let's do one more. They're not difficult. They're a lot harder when you just read the book and have to work one out. But if you follow a procedure, you're going to find that these are really interesting and fun, OK? Let's try our second one here. A negative 4 plus x squared equals 8x. 
Well, the first thing I have to do is put it in the correct format. x squared minus 8x minus 4 equals 0. Then I have to isolate the constant. So I get x squared minus 8x plus something equals 4. Then I take my middle term, divide by 2 or multiply by a half, square it, and add it to both sides. Now remember, that's the A I want to go back to, okay? So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. Now we already know that that's going to factor into the two identical terms. And so that's the sign. I'll take the square root of the first term and the second term, or third term, and I'm going to get x minus 4 squared equals 20. Remember our A. That's why I told you to root. A lot of times you'll get confused and try and use that. Don't do that, OK? Now what does, let's see, we'll take the square root of both sides. And what does the square root of 20 equal? The square root of 20 equals the square root of 2 times 2 times 5. I can pull a 2 out, leaving the 5. So x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus 2 square roots of 5. Moving the 4 over to the other side and solving for x, we get x is equal to 4 plus or minus 2 square roots of 5. There's our answer. Simple, isn't it? It's not that difficult. And recall our favorite three letters. We'll see you Monday. You have a good test.